Hey there, I'm Fee Peel from The Lived Perspective. I'm a white skinned, short, red and brown haired human with black round rim glasses in a blue rib jumper underneath a black faux leather jacket. Sitting here on a park bench, yellow park bench, with gorgeous green grass in the background, beautiful spring green trees above and a swathe of gorgeous uh, Australian native trees behind me. Coming to you from Unseated Ninwell and Nambri Lands, bringing you Mental Health Month Musings 14, no, 18. Um, face pocket notes, no. Let's try that again. Mental Health Month Musings 19. Face pocket notes on person centered care. I could edit that up, but <clears throat> I'm not gonna. Today I want to have a little bit of a chat about the next scenario that we're reviewing, which was the clinician consumer scenario where the consumer was talking about the music that they liked and the clinician's reflections upon that. Um, and instead of reading through um, sections of on becoming a person, because I'm realizing it can be quite cumbersome and probably a little bit boring, um, <clears throat> I'm going to just try and summarize and distill some of what is said in that introduction and I'm pretty much going to stay in the introduction of that book because that is an amazing book and I would love you if you're interested after all of this to go check it out because there's so much wisdom and I don't want to try and translate Carl Rogers. I think that being an extra element in all of that for that entire, bo entire book and the limited way I could treat that in what 12 more posts uh, <coughs> wouldn't do it justice and I'm also not going to necessarily move sequentially through the introduction I'm just going to grab out bits and pieces because these scenarios jump around a bit anyway and I but they were trying to speak to the heart of some of what he deals with in that introduction so he makes a comment about how he has learned one of his key learnings for him is that he needs to permit himself to understand another and he he goes into why that is a deliberate choice of words but he then goes on to unpack that and explain that when someone describes something to you if there is no curiosity about it you're responding to what you think they've said and if someone says you know that tree over there is green you can look at it and go yep that tree is green moving on if someone says to you that tree is blue and your response is well that's dumb that's stupid it's obviously not blue there's something that happens there and it shuts down not only conversation and curiosity it shuts down the building of a relationship and one of the things he talks about is that that is often about fear for the person that is in the support space whether it's the clinician or in in some of these scenarios as we're considering a non-clinical approach it's anybody that is receiving information that is jarring to our own sensibility giving ourselves permission to go i don't understand what you're saying can you describe that to me allows us to open up an alternate understanding on the way of seeing the world like, I don't see that as blue. Why do you see that as blue? Whether or not that's a logical response is not the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is being able to understand what someone else sees and why they might see it. And learn to hold that and accept that. And part of his work is also about unconditional positive regard. You know, I don't see blue, but you see blue. That's okay. That's what you see. Um, so that... That's kind of where I want to revisit this post and I've alerted it up. But before I go there, I am going to let you all know this. Come the 31st of October, and I will give you far more context for this on the 31st of October, uh, the way that I engage with social media is going to change significantly. And I know I have hinted that this or actually outright said it in, on a few occasions uh, over the last 12 months. And I want to help you understand why there seems to be that inconsistency. Those of you who have been reading my blog post and been following along will know that the last 12 months or so for me has been grappling with the final, final diagnosis, finally having a diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder. 
And for me, that has been relieving but terrifying. Relieving because I've always known it. And it's something my psychiatrist and I were dealing with for quite some time. But the biggest concern was that if we name it, it's going to make it harder for me to navigate this world. Because people don't understand it. I say it's associative identity disorder. You say James McAvoy, Sybil, serial killer. The list goes on. When people go, so a uh, dissociative identity disorder, what's that? And if you then have to fill in the blank with multiple personality disorder, wait, wait, I, I'm not sure that I want to be in the same room as you. So sometimes there feels like there's a little bit of inconsistency to what I say and do on social media. There's a reason for that. Each of my alters operates to protect me to protect the self that is actually not me speaking right now, that self, the people in my life that love me the most and know me the most know that self. That is the self that has been seen occasionally on social media, which is we're always alone. The world is fucked and I don't know why I try. And when that, that self is speaking, it is a deeply, deeply hurt and traumatized and vulnerable individual. And my job as thing that most of you know and sometimes love um, is to act as a mouthpiece, not only for that self, but for the other multiplicities that also stand and sound in most cases like me, but say the stuff that needs to be said. That doesn't mean that we exist to hurt people. We exist to keep ourselves with a big capital S safe so there have been times where it's been fuck this we're not doing this anymore it hurts too much and people don't understand and we want to be understood and people just don't get it and then there are alters that then talk the self out of that and go no we have to show up we have to be consistent we have to give people you know some context you know we have a business to run we have people that value what we say all sorts of things that are all valid and valuable but it's time for us to all step back so we will for consistency's sake there is an agreement amongst all of us that we will continue these until the end of mental health month and we will say a more formal goodbye on the 31st of october we have got some big things coming up in our future some of it has a lot to do with writing and we're getting you know, that is the gift of this epoch in time, of being able to have shared with some of you, shared with the world via social media in ways that we would not have otherwise been able to connect. That is opening up these incredible opportunities. So when we publish or when we're doing a show or when we're doing speaking at an event or, or whatever it is, if there's something cool, we will share it via our Facebook page and our LinkedIn and Twitter and all the rest of it. But in terms of a bird's eye view on the life of Fee, that's ending. So we do want to thank you for your time. We are going to leave you with this scenario, remembering that this little bit all started with Carl Rogers giving himself permission to understand another. So I'm going to invite you now to go to that scenario, have another think about what was dealt with in that particular consumer clinician scenario. Person-centered care is not about your suggestions so we have the same a clinician and a consumer the clinician is having a chat to the consumer trying to find some way to motivate them to feel better about the depression that they've presented to discuss what do you like nah uh, I like music, um, I like reading, I like, um, oh, I don't know, um, occasionally I go for a walk, hmm, okay cool, what kind of music do you like? Oh, I'm pretty eclectic but lately I've been listening to a lot of Brooke Fraser, oh yeah I know Brooke Fraser, oh you do, yeah yeah, I'm a Christian, I like Christian music, okay. But why Brooke Fraser? I don't know. I, I really just like the depth of some of her earlier work. Huh. Wouldn't Hillsong be better? 
Um, it's not really my gem. Oh, really? Because they're much more upbeat. They're much happier. Insane. Person-centered care is not about your suggestions. If you were going to forum this piece, if you were going to jump, going to jump into the place of the clinician, how would you shift the narrative? We'll catch you on the flip side.